This is the beginning and the end, the rise and the fall. Our gate will begin its saunter at the source when the infant learns to crawl. Genesis, he overlooked my gifts 
Arima, the most gifted seraph, the utmost skill of the cherubs. He felt his aptitude and slate were being misused, shamed. He repined this to O the scientist, who replied with a calm face, expressionless. Doesn't go ignored Maybe she was right They will realize I can change the world Open up their eyes They know I am more Than some meager blood Not some average bones I believe in love I just wanna prove I deserve this gift I will change this world Baby, this is it
vision of the world had been realized, but the sculpture of the earth was looked upon by jealous eyes. Arima refused to relent. He demanded to be heard. Let my unique, deft hands be known, he asserted. But even this brash avowal was met in return by no mouthful. Oh, simply just smiled. So, defeated and galled, Arima headed for the darkness. No one seemed to understand. Only the shadows would hearken. He sat in peace, but on his shoulder, at rest, perched a dinky brownish spider named Barias.
the seed had been sown. Now the evil would grow. His keen young veins were ripe for this aim. So Arima set forth to use the lamps as a torch. And with everyone around, he tore them to the ground. And suddenly, without warning, their creation was burning. Their design ignited, all that hard work slighted. So Toba the Torah was sent to hold Arima responsible for his mess, to ban him to this fiery abyss, while the remaining found a new place to live. to a new place, to start over on fresh terrain. And from his desolate throne, he watched them compose a mountainous wall of stone to separate themselves from him. A massive, jagged barricade to lock themselves in. Theirs would be the light, his would be the dark. 
for a century, these halves would wait. One world set apart.
waste your end on mine Untie your mind Let your bloated brain Balloon and float away Wet the end up with a thread Thimble upon your index Feed the line through its side Draw it from the other side Pull the strand to satisfy the need to compose This entire naive glow Set the needle on its path Bobbing up and down and past Tears and seams all turned to one With every stitch in each flashed by for the dark and the light. The two fragments recessed, still left unaddressed, stranded in unrest. In the dark lived two brothers, Atticaius, the youngest, and the heir, Pallas. As children of the lists of myths, their favorite was the narrative of Holy the Sea and the Divided Terrain. Atticaius would always dream of a destiny to leave, of fulfilling the prophecy. But he was laughed at, fitted with an unfavorable, grafted cast for a foolish dreamer, a romance seeker. The streets frowned, but deep down, he screamed out. He knew there was accuracy in the antiquated legacy, legitimacy to the famed sea, a quiet certainty to his fated fantasies. Look at all that which surrounds me I'm supposed to call this home The dark has become so Just my pedigree
wish the dark has been your home. If you elope, I'll hunt you down. Through suffering, you'll atone. Dear Pallas, you're my brother. You've loved and watched over me. But there is something bigger at stake. My purpose is this journey. Brother, you are short-sighted, naive and starry-eyed. You are not the chosen one. This will be your demise. Brother, I can't help this feeling. My heart tells me to run. You were meant to rule the dark. I was meant to see the sun. Atticaius, tired of fiction and bound by his ambition, left his home for the city of light. Disguised as a citizen, his identity was hidden within a city that sat glistening. He was eager for this new life. He contemplated and hated why had he waited so long to flee his home forever shaded where the jaded were never wrong. He took a deep breath. He was finally gone. His hope was left strong that a meaning would be found that had kept him withdrawn. His stare had caught a light and he fell for the sight. Her name was Princess Anura and she suffered from the same strife. And like Atticaius, she spent most of her time dreaming of a different life.
lost if she found out where I came from. She turned so fast and not look back. I can't go back. I just won't go back. was eager to trade vows, to float away and settle down. But first, Atticaius had to meet Anura's father, his majesty, the one and only, his royal highness, the king. He had to kiss his jeweled fist and bow to the crown, kneeling on the ground. He would propound to become her prince. So, you're the boy I heard so much about from my daughter's open mouth. She's described for me wild fantasies of true love and ancient prophecy. Did you think that you could waltz right in and steal? Seducing her with empty dreams and rusted rings. Well, I'm the king, it won't be that easy. Father,
Denied by the king and his greed, the pair would indeed be married in secrecy. But before they had agreed when and where to meet, the princess felt queasy and weak, could barely speak. Atticaius knew instantly why she was so green and what had caused the disease. It was his proximity. She was ill from his company. Evil's ubiquity. You can't run from your history. Your past will seek you endlessly. He knew the only remedy to her viral malady resided and abided on the opposite side of the Petrus Levy and its harsh, barbed, concrete peak. So while avoiding the leak of his true identity, Atticaius convinced the princess of their leave they would meet with a specialist and rid her blood of this. He kissed her on the lips and assured her a lifelong live. i 
So they arrived at the doctor's camp. His crude shack, a shanty with walls of broken glass, light leaking through the shattered cracks. And though he was cordial, the young couple was doubtful. Shorman had warned them to keep a close eye on their adored ones. But they had journeyed for a reason. They were here for the medicine, to cure the infection. But nothing could prepare him for the events that would ensnare them. All he could do is trust what he knew. He would listen to his gut and live for his love. Oh, what 
you got ain't no quick fix, it ain't no common goal. What you need's a bona fide practice miracle. Now the thing about my miracles is that they don't grow on trees. They don't fall from the sky, you need a doctor like me. <laughs> Lucky for you, you found me, so the rest should be no fuss. But before we get to saving lives, there's a few things to discuss. <laughs> now I'm sure you're wondering what's in it for me. Surely I would not perform the miracle for free. Well, I'm not asking for a lot. In fact, it won't cost you a dime. I just want the princess here with me until the end of time. I promise to take care of her. Well, rather she'll take care of me. For the rest of a life in the dark, fulfilling doctor's fantasy. and filters, pried scrolls and read excerpts. He spoke in foreign phonetics and read runes from ancient relics. Stirred ointments with potions and unctions with doses. He whisked it till smoke rose and seeped into her nose. The illness had relinquished. The doctor had fixed it. The cleansing accomplished, their love was free to flourish. But before it could sink in, the front door was kicked in. Standing in its place was Pallas. Driven by malice, he had barged in to challenge Atticaius, to prove their love. Their word wouldn't be enough. Pallas needed it in blood. Tracing your steps Along with your dainty Exquisite guest Across mountain lands And serpentine seas These two have been On quite an odyssey But you're a fool To think this princess Could ever really love A couple of poor boys like us She requires riches Rishishé Riding with a road home On turning her ways Lovers have charmed with Chiffon so she she Chased her with their conceited coterie Why? 
talk and you've been lying through your teeth Honora, please listen, I really can't explain I meant to tell you sooner, it's been gnawing at my brain Now you know the truth, but that knowledge shouldn't change The nature of our love, we've broken through the chains I'm sure that she would care to hear your acumen As to how your presence is the reason she is sick But I suppose it's in vain since her life is ending When I thrust this blade into her heart a thumb pen Brother, no! What have I done? My blade has pierced your side. This was never my intent. Oh God, please stay alive. To Pallas, you're my brother. You've tried to protect me, but your dagger's edge finding my flesh, it truly was my destiny. Brother, I was short-sighted. I ignored your cries. You really are the chosen one, the calculated sacrifice. Listen to my last words before I fade away This is my gift to you Live for your love every day Please don't let your tired heart stop rescue and restore you from any scope.